But I just want to sort of like stay on this issue of the possibility of a crisis because um, Olivia, even in your articles, though you're sort of like downplaying the catastrophic nature of debt, you do say there are circumstances in which the interest rate to uh, below the growth rate um, situation we have now, it can flip, you know, and it has in the past. It flipped in the United States in the 60s and the 70s. It flipped in Italy just a year or two ago. So how do we, uh, first of all, how seriously should we take that risk? Number two, are there any sort of warning signs or sort of like fundamental changes that we should be especially careful about encountering uh, because those are the kinds of things that would actually foreshadow a uh, sudden change in the interest rate to growth relationship and the onset of all these dangerous dynamics. Yes, no, I, I've worried very much about this and R minus G to, uh, to be technical uh, can flip sign, right? The question is why? So I, I, I can think of three reasons. The first one is that we accumulate so much debt and Ken is right that this increases the equilibrium rate and that goes above. This would be a very slow process mm -hmm. and there would be time to adjust. But we'd have to adjust. The second is that, to be perfectly frank, we do not, at least I do not, I don't want to talk for the profession, we've had this steady decrease in the interest rate since the mid-80s, continuing a bit more in the crisis, but, you know, continuing now. And we have no explanation, or another way of saying this, we have 10 explanations, and I worry a bit. So I'm comforted with the idea that the trend is so strong that it's likely to continue, but given that I'm not sure I understand exactly what's behind it, whether it's a demand for safe assets or a different type of investment, the world of intangibles, all these things which have been discussed, I think it could turn around. So I do not exclude the possibility that the equilibrium interest rate, if you want to, uh, use that word, would go up. Again, I think it would be a slow process, in which case, you know, if, if it happened and you invite me again in five years and I is higher, I will basically say, well, I have the same approach, but the numbers are different and therefore you have to reduce that. Uh, the third one, which I think is the most relevant for most countries, particularly in Japan, but I think in the US, is again, kind of this sudden stop, Latin American thing, in which the investors suddenly wake up and say, well, end of the world, we sell. Now, What's interesting in this case is if the investors are scared for no reason except that the other ones are scared and you want to get out before they do. Uh, that's something that the Fed can deal with. I mean, in Japan, one of the main reasons why they're able to maintain these very low nominal rates is that they give a BOJ, the Bank of Japan, has said, I will maintain the long rate at that level. If you sell bonds, I'll buy them. So, when you have a big player like the BOJ in front of you, then you're not terribly worried about the rate going up because you know they're going to buy. So if it's a liquidity issue or a certain stop issue, not a fundamental sustainability issue, then I think the Fed would probably be able to avoid it. So first reason, there'll be time to adjust. Second reason, there'll probably be time to adjust. Third, which is a sudden stop, a sudden increase in rates, I think the Fed could avoid it.